If I make a request, please, before I proceed, uh, it might inconvenience a few of you, uh, but please, uh, if it has a purpose, can we all stand up, please, just for a second. Thank you very much. You can sit again. Um, of course, for those of us who are here throughout the lecture, Alhamdulillah, our Sheikh has covered quite a wide range of issues that all actually focus on the Nigerian situation. I was given the, uh, the chance to, more or less, I was supposed to have um, got his paper, have a look, listen to the lecture, and then probably make a comment on it. Of course, you saw what happened uh, in the paper was not ready. However, I also have a perspective to add to what has been said. And I think I will focus narrowly on an issue. And that focus, uh, with the limited time I was given, uh, I hope I will do a little bit of justice to it, and it may uh, actually be useful for all of us. And as such, um, I will straight away go to the point of the issue. I'll focus primarily on the issue of Boko Haram. I say Boko Haram with a little bit of hesitance because as far as we know, that's not what they call themselves. Uh, however, we have been subjected to all sorts of uh, manipulation and intimidation and, uh, and indoctrination that we have eventually, virtually everybody has accepted that their name is Boko Haram. So, uh, for convenience, we'll be using that. Um, for those who may know my degree, my degree, of course, is said to be their base. Uh, I'm from my degree. Uh, I was born and brought up there. I know I can relate to the uh, lecturer's comment about how peaceful the country used to be and how it is today. I know how my degree used to be and how it has now turned out to be. And of course, it all boils down to our responsibility to see if we can save this sinking ship. Now, it started as probably for as a local issue, as a kind of um, insurgency that has to do with uh, a, a local issue, primarily in my degree and environment. However, Due to the injustice that we have, uh, our Sheikh has already highlighted, it was ignored. And eventually, from a local issue, it became a national issue. And it only became a national issue after the attack, or the, the, there was a claim of an attack on the uh, police headquarters in Abuja, which was in June uh, this year. And then, the attention of the authorities become much more uh, therefore in tune with that. Otherwise, we in my degree have been suffering under that siege for quite a while without any serious attention from the federal government. Soon after that, we also, following a couple of months or so, August, this year still, the attack on the United Nations. Uh, building. And that too, in fact, blow the whole thing more than to a local issue but becomes an international issue. Now, have you reached such a status? Then you begin to wonder who really were the players in this? And we have Who really were the players in this? 
Now, I wouldn't go into speculations, but at least one thing is completely certain. Our Sheikh has already coined the term, and we can accept that, as it was an irreligious, religious and we, there, has, there, there is a lot of uh, evidence to show that there are other players other than what apparently meet the eye. And um, what did the eye usually deceptive? It? And it is the tip of the iceberg. The bottom is huge. But what is important is for us not to see it simply as an incident, and an issue, as an, an event that will pass away. And not only that, but that we, innocently, unaffected, so to say, are not responsible for it. And therefore, we are not responsible for bringing about its end. If we do that, it's a serious, serious mistake. Because the incidents that have been identified already in terms of all the religious crises before then, and then this one, has metamorphosed into a huge, huge, huge snowball of external attraction. For whatever reason, we can now assess that the Nigerian situation today, especially the security situation, talk less of the hardship, the injustice, that is the social injustice that we know is going on, and the political injustice that we have experienced in the past 12 years in terms of our elections, in terms of our politicians, in terms of the leaders. But the security situation that is now a burden to everybody, especially in the law, is something that we have to take seriously and have some sense of being responsible not necessarily in bringing it about directly, but in how we partake in getting to the root of it and contributing to dealing with it. Our leadership have demonstrated clearly their inability or unwillingness to deal with it. Or rather, in fact, if you look below, their hidden hands in bringing it about and promoting it and therefore advancing it. We know when this new dispensation came, that is 1999 in terms of politics, Obasanjo, who of course was once uh, the head of state in Nigeria, was seen as a kind of savior there was a compromise, there was a kind of um, conclusion that he is somebody you can rely upon as a leader. And he came. And unfortunately for the few months he came, he clearly demonstrated otherwise. But we in Nigeria started to realize that a little bit late. However, countries that have other motives and other interests actually took him on board, took him as the center of attraction, took him as a statesman, promoted his uh, ideals, supported his atrocities, and at the end of the day, as we know, he contested twice, somehow, somehow, won the elections. In fact, he would have won the third one, which is uh, the, the third term agenda. I did it but I did it but for Plus, one or two decided otherwise. Of course, you can say the senators, the House of Reps, Achiko, and the rest of them were responsible. They had their agenda, of course. But Allah did not allow such an atrocity to continue. And he was. But unfortunately, in the uh, other countries that clearly promoted him. He came, of course, during the Bush administration. Bush, Bush administration uh, more or less came more or less at the same time and they had the administration together. He was very much promoted by the United States. And they more or less turned their blind eye 
to what is happening in Nigeria. Now, not fighting a blind eye, but actually promoted the negative aspect of it. And uh, more or less, not quite supported the positive aspect of it. And that therefore degenerated into the situation that we find ourselves gradually until when he was taken over from him. <coughs> no, no, not taken over. He cut, cut, uh, sort of um, constructed the 2007 structure and gave it to us. And of course, we swallow it. And that's what we are burdened with today the leadership that came about after him. 2007. All these are history, isn't it? But then they are what is molding and pointing out where we are today. When he, when he was in power, he had such a strong support, such a strong lobby group in the United States that actually promoted his, 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 uh, his uh, programs and make it almost impossible for anybody else to break through and make an, an, an impact. When we say the United States, we're talking about the whole West, of course, being led by the, the U.S. Um, having had such a uh, foothold in the West, the religious conflicts that have been highlighted earlier by our Sheikh, the inter-religious conflicts that, that, that were highlighted, especially in Jaws, in Kaduna, in Tabao Palewa, in Pesis Salat, they were happening. We generally have an understanding of the nature of it. But of course, we don't know the details of the promoters behind it. But at the same time, it, is, it was an internal issue. It, or rather, it, it appears to be the case. While outside, because of the 9-11, the 9-11 more or less brought about a new United States, a new kind of perspective to life in the United States, especially the leadership. And therefore, any religious movement, movement anywhere that indicates some violence is being looked at with skepticism and is being uh, assessed as such. And therefore the conflict that were going on in Nigeria were looked at as an indication of some emergence of a possible terrorism. And therefore, our people back home, that is the leaders, who, are, who had some kind of interest of course to, to maintain the status quo, were promoting that view, and the view was gradually taking hold, and the view came to a point where, even before the real emergence of Boko Haram, we were seen as a potential base for al like a potential base for the United States for security. Please, what I'm saying is, is the public knowledge. I'm not saying anything that's new to you, but I want to just put things in perspective so that we see ourselves as what would be our responsibility in this matter. Now, because we are being viewed as such, and that view gradually kind of developed, when the Boko Haram phenomena emanates and, and kind of surface, it kind of matches the predictions. And it kind of indicated to those who want to promote that prediction that, uh -huh, we told you so. Now, as I said earlier, we're not talking necessarily about the hands that brought about this position or the, the reasons why they do so. We all have our knowledge in some local setup in our places of worship, um, work and relationships, and therefore we can kind of come up with some views on that. But the reality is, it was being 
promoted as such. Before the election of 2011, or was this election? Oh, it was election, let's say. Before the election of 2011, when the current president took over, there was a view that it had to be um, it had to be maintained. That is, this is a person that had to win the presidency because of all sorts of interests. That is from the United States. And a lot of there was support and promotions and so on were given and then the election as we know how hugely, hugely dramatized it was in the nation. If you are in the country you would know that uh, the election was quite hugely, especially the campaign activity. Not the crowd that kind of turned up but the campaign itself was huge and that was because it was hugely planned and promoted. And eventually, as we know, they came to be where they were. But they succeeded in getting the uh, presidency. Now, we can see from the last six months or so, when since they came to power, what has been happening in the country, it is turning out to be more or less a country that the leadership doesn't seem to either have the capacity, the strength, or the willingness or the level of knowledge or commitment to actually deal with the issues that come about. And therefore, they have so many reasons to promote the conflict that has now emerged through the activities of the so-called Boko Haram as a pro a an, um, an insurgency that has got external support. External support from the uh, Al Qaeda Islamic Maghrib, or from the Al Shabaab in Somalia and other places. And therefore, we now have reached a point where Boko Haram is seen as an affiliate or an organization that has got affiliation or relationship or support or some training or supply or whatever with the worldwide global. Uh, jihadists as they took them. Because of that, therefore, we are also aware it, it was a public information in Nigeria that just last November the United States of America actually took the matter much higher up in their system that they consider Boko Haram as an organization that is capable of not only attacking and harming the United States interests outside, um, outside the United States, particularly Nigeria, but the potential <coughs> and therefore the possible capacity to eventually attack the homeland, that is the soil of the US. And because of that, therefore, is being is being kind of considered to be to be tagged as foreign terrorist organization. That classification will give the United States authority not only the constitutional or legal power to deal with them as they would deal with any uh, insurgency like Al Qaeda, but also to promote any at their base the support to deal with them. And once that designation is, is actually approved and uh, then it goes through, we can expect some kind of targeting of our country, particularly our part of the country, in dealing with the insiders. And as I'm sure it has been circulated around and people must have read it, there was some article kind of being tagged as targeted for destruction in Nigeria. That has been going around. I'm sure many of you must have seen it. And therefore there is this this tendency that 
if things continue the way they, 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 they are going, and indications so, uh, show that that is possible, because the capacity of the government has indicated, or the security has indicated that either unwillingness, incapable, or actually conveniently not dealing with the issue, then it is likely to escalate. And once it escalates, we come back to the point where is Nigeria likely to be the next Iraq? Iraq was invade, invaded about 10 years, 9 years ago, and we know what the consequences are. And if we sit down here talking about it and just feeling sorry for the situation and saying probably we're not, we're not going to reach there, not Nigeria, we may wake up actually finding ourselves in such a serious situation. So the issue here is, because I'm just scratching the surface, please, because you can see him standing by my side and saying, <laughs> it's time to go, it's time to go. Um, but the issue here is, if we, now in this case I'm talking about we the Muslims, and in particular the Muslim from the north, because what is now being already portrayed is the Muslim law is making Nigeria ungovernable, simply because it's not their leadership. Now we know different, we know what is happening in our lands. So, let's say. so if we feel we have a role to play in this, because we have identified the leadership in the country doesn't seem to have the capacity, the commitment, or probably really the interest to deal with it, our leadership in the north, political leadership, look at our, all our governors, you can point one of them to say it's a serious one, deal with it. Look at our security personnel, the ones we, we can identify, our ex army officers, generals, head of states, our, the crop of our political leadership, are they likely to deal with this issue on, on our behalf? Unlikely. Our religious leaders, our enemies, look at all the sectors of our leadership. The likelihood is we may still continue the downward spiral that we've been going. So how can we, as an organization, I get a Muslim for individuals, those of us sitting in this room, what is it we can do in this matter? Can we just carry on talking about it and lamenting and go to sleep and then say, we remember and, and a crisis that is still going on, the plateau crisis. Nigerian Muslim Forum has done something about it. Because Nigerian Muslim Forum has done something about it, which was, which is now actually coming to surface, the issue of ICC going to Plato to do something about uh, the situation there. I think because my time has run out, I think our organization in this country, Nigeria Muslim Forum, and some individuals within us can actually pick up the matter, go back home, and start working on how we can actually influence certain aspects of what is going on and bring about a possible change. At least, we have, it's not an option to just watch it. Even if our action does not materialize, we will have the contention of having pride. And I will therefore recommend to the forum looking at this, setting up a committee, and actually taking it forward. Now, unfortunately, I very much described the surface, but at the same time, at least I've thrown the question to all of us and bring about the attention of all of us to the issue at hand. And therefore, uh, I will uh, say to the forum, uh, thank you very much for organizing this and giving us the opportunity 
uh, at least mention one or two things that people might go home and think about, and probably the forum, uh, take it forward and uh, uh, deal with it. Uh, that will our parents, will be our community, uh, for our brothers and sisters. Uh,